वेलकम आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस लेक्चर इन द कोर्स संधि इन पाणिनियन ग्रामर दिस इज द फाइनल लेक्चर ऑफ अच संधि वी हैव बीन स्टडिंग अच संधि in quite a lot of detail because it is a very important type of sandhi we said that ach sandhi is that sandhi which replaces ach ach is a vowel this sandhi could be a consonant or could be another vowel as well depending on the environment let us take a recap of what we have done so far about at sandhi and also some related topics to deal with we always stated and i constantly repeated that there are two classifications ekasthanika ekadesha and dvisthanika ekadesha and we kept on studying these two diagrams ekasthanika ekadesha you have a plus b as the input and a plus b in samhita mode a coming immediately before b and in case of this environment a gets substituted by c so a plus b is the input and c is the output this c plus b is the output this is ekasthanika ekadesha and dvisthanika ekadesha is the second classification where you have a plus b as the input and a coming immediately before b and b coming immediately after a now in place of both of them c is the one substitute so a plus b is the input c is the output this is the dvisthanika ekadesha we said that ekasthanika ekadesha has got these two instances if you have ik followed by ach then in place of ik yan is the substitute this is the first instance and the second instance is h followed by ach and h is substituted by a y v y v these are the two major these are the two instances of ekasthanika ekadesha and we have studied them in detail we also interpreted the sutras iko yanachi and icho y v y v to understand the sandhi better we also studied the uddeshya vidhaya bhava and the number of substituents that are delineated because of this uddeshya vidhaya bhava then we also studied the criteria for selection of the substitute we then also studied the template examples and the specific examples of both these sandhis we also studied the statements made by the later paninian grammatical tradition in order to make the treatment exhaustive and also to account for the changes that are brought in by the course of the time then we studied the five types of five instances of dvisthanika ekadesha the first and the second one are stated on this slide so if you have a followed by any ach in general both of them they get substituted by one guna substitute this is the first instance and the second instance is if a is followed by h both of them they get substituted by vriddhi of course in the samhita mode so a and h a and ach they are all in the samhita mode and guna over here 
and vriddhi over here are the substitutes. And then we have pararupa as well as savarna dirgha. So you have a plus b, a is purva, b is para, and in place of a plus b, this para, namely b, is stated to be the one substitute. This is pararupa. And if you have ak followed by another ak, obviously the savarna ak, then in place of both of them, ak dirgha is the substitute stated by the sutra akas savarna dirgha. This is the savarna dirgha sandhi. And finally, you have purva rupa sandhi, where you have a plus b in close, a plus b in close proximity in the samhita where A is Purva and B is Para and in place of both of them you place the Purva that is A. These are the five types that we have studied and these are the Sutras. So Guna Sandhi is stated by the Sutra Ad Gunaha 6187. Vriddhi Sandhi is stated by the Sutra Vriddhi Rechi 6188. We also studied some more Sutras stating Vriddhi Sandhi. Then Pararupa Sandhi is primarily stated by Engi Pararupam 6194. Then Savarna Dirgha Sandhi stated by Sutra Akas Savarna Dirgha 61101. And finally, the Purvarupa Sandhi is stated by the Sutra Ami Purvaha onwards 61107 onwards. The Dvisthanika Ekadesha is governed by the Adhikara Sutra Eka Purva Parayoho, which means one substitute takes place in place of two sounds, namely previous and latter. Eka Purva Parayoho is an Adhikara that governs the five instances of Dvisthanika Ekadesha. Panini, in his own grammar, has stated Eko Yanachi as well as Echo Yavayavaha and the other sutras of the Ayavayav Sandhi before this particular Adhikara. If you look at the numbers, Eko Yanachi is 6177, Echo Yavayavaha is 6178, and then the other sutras, Ette Dhatyutsu, 89, and so on, Kshaya Jayav Shakyarthe, Krayastadarthe they come before 6184 in the Samhitayam Adhikara. Now in this lecture, let us look at some other issues related to Ach Sandhi. And the four issues that we shall deal with are stated on this particular slide. Let us take some sentence examples and try to apply the rules and try to dissolve the Sandhi. Let us also study how the Ach Sandhi rules feed the Swara, san, swara rules, accent rules. Then let us deal with this complex task of Sandhi splitting in which some directions will be mentioned. And finally, let us deal with the topic of Asiddha with reference to the Ach Sandhi. So let us take the sentence examples first. And these examples are primarily taken from the very celebrated and popular text called Srimad Bhagavad Gita. So this example we have already taken at the beginning. Let us take it once again. Karmanye Vadhika Raste. This is the verse. And here we have three words. Karmani, Eva and Adhikaras. Three words are uttered in Samhita mode, are in close proximity. So here we have E followed by this A. And so this is the scope of application of Eko Yanachi. And here we have A at the end of Eva followed by A at the beginning of Adhikaras, which is the scope of application of Akas Savarne Dirghaha. So both the Sandhis take place and you have karmani eva as the input and karmanya eva as the output. Similarly, eva adhikaras as input and eva 
a and dhikaras as the output. When you join them together, you get the line karmanye vadhikaras. So there are these two sandhis that are playing a, an important role over here. And they are yan sandhi as well as the savarna dirgha sandhi. Similarly, if you look at sangostva karmani, mate sangostva karmani, here we have sangha u plus astu and a karmani, three words. Now sangha u, this u comes because of the sutras applying and we shall study them when we take up Swadhi Sandhi section. Right now, let us assume that this U comes in because of the sutras and so we have A followed by U. So this is the scope of application of Guna Sandhi and then we have Astu where A is the beginning vowel and Astu has got U at the end and immediately after this U comes A. So there are lots of Sandhis that can take place over here. So now this Sangha plus U and you have the scope of application of Guna, so Guna taking place and so Sango, Sango this is the output generated within a Pada. Now after this becomes O, now this A which is the right hand side environment, this comes into play and now this O and A, O coming at the end of the Pada, a coming at the beginning of the pada, so there now we have Purva Rupa Sandhi stated by the sutra Engah Padanta Dati that is applied over here. And so we have O as the one substitute in place of both O and A. Similarly, this U and this A, they both are in Samhita mode, and so this U is substituted by V that is yan sandhi. So we have sang, o, stva and akarmani as the next stage in the derivation. And so then when we join them together, we get sango stva karmani as the sentence. And here we have guna as well as purva rupa as well as yan sandhi taking place. Similarly, the other example is Pujar Hau and Arisudana. Katham Bhishmam Aham Sankhe Pujar Hau Arisudana. Ishubhi Pratiyot Syami Pujar Hau Arisudana. Katham Bhishmam Aham Sankhe Dronam Chamadhu Sudana. Ishubhi Pratiyot Syami Pujar Hau Arisudana. So here we have Pujar Hau plus Arisudana, Au followed by A, the scope of application of Ayavayav Sandhi. So Au gets substituted by Av. So we have Pujar Hav and Arisudana and when we join them together we get Pujar Hav Arisudana. This is the example of Ayavayav Sandhi. Similarly, Tamuvacha Rishi Keshaha. So, Tam is derived in this manner, Ta plus Am, and Uvacha is derived in this manner, U, A, Vacha, and A. Internal prakriya happens. We are not going into the details of all these. Just suffice for us to say that there is some prasadana taking place. So, you have U, A, and then Vacha and A, and then since this a and this a, they both are in within a pada. However, this is am, so there is purva rupa sandhi that takes place, and so we have a as the one substitute. So ta, a, ma, tam, and u replacing both these vowels. This is samprasarana. So samprasarana cha applies here. Ami purva applied here. Samprasarana cha applies, and we have a purva rupa sandhi. And so we have u vach uh, tam u vach. There are two purva rupa sandhis taking place in this fourth example. Then we have sidanti mamagatrani. 
So we have seen the plus a plus anti. And here very we have a followed by another a. They are within a pada. And so atogane applies and pararupa sandhi takes place. So this a comes over here as the substitute and we get the form C danti. This is the example of pararupa sandhi. Similarly, pasyaitam pandavutranam acharya mahatim chamum. So we have pasya plus etam and this a is followed by a. This is the scope of application of vridhi sandhi. And so we have pasya plus i plus tam as the output that is pasyaitam. This is the example of vridhi sandhi. So this is how we can take multiple examples of sentences and we can show various sandhis applying and making those units fit to be used as part of the sentence. Now let us go to the second topic, feeding the accent rules. We have seen this topic before. Let us take a recap. The output of Atsandhi becomes the input for accent rules. This is very important. In both situations, within a Pada, there is internal Sandhi and also between two Padas. That means when it is an external Sandhi. We have already studied how Yan Sandhi becomes an input to the accent rules when we study two important sutras, Udatta Yano Hal Purvat 61174 and Udatta Yor Yanaha Svarito Nudatta 824. Let us study this sutra which is important as far as the Dvisthanika Ekadesha is concerned. The sutra says, Ekadesha udattena udattaha 825 So the one substitute in place of two substituents is udatta If one of the substituents is udatta So we have udatta plus anudatta as the input and the output is udatta Or anudatta plus udatta and the output is udatta And the third option is udatta plus udatta and the output is also udatta vowel. Ekadesha udattena udattaha. Let us take the examples of each. So we have udatta plus anudatta as input, and ekadesha udattena udattaha applies, 825 applies, and the output generated is udatta. So here is a concrete example. So we have Rama followed by am and we are deriving ramam which is the dvitiya ekavachana accusative singular. Now the word rama has got the final vowel udatta. This a is udatta so it is unmarked. This a is anudatta and that is why it has got a horizontal bar below it to indicate that this a is udatta. Now am is a subsuffix so by default any subsuffix is anudatta. So this is also marked as anudatta. So now we have Rama plus am by 412 and the accent rules apply. And now we have 61107 ami purvaha applying. So we have Ram, a and ma. Now what is the accent of this a? That is the issue. So the substituents of this a are this a at the end of Rama and a at the beginning of am. Now, a at the beginning of am is anudatta and a at the end of rama is udatta. So, in fact, this is a combination of udatta plus anudatta. And so now, 825 says that the resultant combination would be a vowel which is udatta. So, this a remains udatta, therefore it remains unmarked. And so, we have ramam with the final a being marked as udatta. Let us take the other example where we have anudatta followed by udatta that is an input and 
825 applies and the output generated is Udat. So, here we have Labhate plus Atra. Labhate is a verbal form and it is not appearing at the beginning of a sentence, mind you. There is some word that appears before this word. And so we have Labhate followed by Atra. Now, Labhate has got all vowels Anudat. So, all of them they are marked with the horizontal bar below the letters followed by Atra where you have got Tra with the vertical bar on top of it indicating that it is a Svarita that comes immediately after an Udatta that is A which is unmarked. So, Labhate has got all Anudattas and Atra has got a Udatta. Now, in this case, we have A followed by A. This is the scope of application of the sutra Engah Padanta Dati, generating the Purva Rupa Sandhi. So, we have Labhat, A and Tra. So, now this A, which is a substitute, will also get an accent. So, its substituents, namely A and A, have also got some accents. So, A is Anudat and A is Udat. But now, 825 comes into play and says that because one of the substituents is Udat, the substitute has to be Udat. So, in Labhate Tra, A becomes Udat and so it remains unmarked and B becomes Anudat, L becomes Anudat and Tra remains as Swarita. So, this is how in Labhate Tra, 825 plays a, a crucial role as far as the accent distinction is concerned. Ekadesha Udattena Udattaha. Finally, we have Udatta plus Udatta as input and Udatta as the output. So, we have Ramo plus Atra in which O is Udatta and Atra has got A as Udatta. So, here there are two Udattas, O and A. Now, 61109 applies and replaces O and A by Purva that is O. And so, we have Ram, O and Tra. And so, this O now will inherit both the features of Udattas, of both the vowels. In fact, by 825, Ekadesha Udattena Udattaha, O will be, will become Udatta. So, we have Ramotra, where O is Udatta. And because Ra comes before it, so it is marked as Anudatta with a horizontal bar below Ra and Tra is treated as Svarita with the vertical bar on top of the letter. This is how the accent rules are fed by the Sandhi rules, Ach Sandhi rules. We have seen previously how Ikoyanachi, which is Ekasthanika Ekadesha, that feeds into the Swarasutras accent rules. Here are the examples where Ekadesha, namely Dristhanika Ekadesha, in the Adhikara Ekapurva Para Yoho, when this Ekadesha takes place, how the Ekadesha feeds the accent rules. This is extremely important, considering the fact that there are three layers in Paninian grammar, Artha, Shabda and Svara. Now, let us study what is Asiddha and how it can be studied in the light of Achsandhi. So, within the Adhikara Ekapurva Parayoho, which deals with Ekadesha, there is a sutra Shatva Tukora Siddha 6186, which deals with Asiddha. Asiddha literally means non existent, it does something does not exist. So, what Shatva Tukora Siddha says is that the one substitute 
in place of both previous and latter is not existent in the domain of shatva and the augment tuk. Tuk means the. I repeat, the one substitute in place of both ekaha purva parayoho previous and latter is not existent asiddhaha in the domain of shatva and tuk shatva tuko ho. Let us take the examples. So first example is that of the suffix twa being added to the verbal root e to study with the preverb adhi. So we have adhi e and twa. So adhi and e are shown in curly brackets because they form one unit. Adhi and e they always come in combinations. You will not find this e without adhi. However, twa is added only after e. So there are parentheses left hand side before e and right hand side after twa. So technically twa is added to e. However, this e does not occur without this preverb adhi. So there are these curly brackets indicating that this is one unit. So now we have adhi, e and twa and in this case we do the sandhi over here which is akasavarane dirgha. So we have adhi plus twa 61101. Then twa is replaced by lyap by 7135. So we have adhi plus lyap. Now this lyap has got p as a marker, l as, as a marker and only here remains as the suffix. Now because of this p, generally the augment tuk is added after a short vowel, raspasya piti kruti tuk 6171. Now in case of the verbal root e, this is short. But because there is the savarana dirgha sandhi that has already taken place, there is no more short vowel. This is a long vowel. Now can we add the augment tuk over here? It seems no. But shatva tukora siddha 6186 is specifically designed to solve this problem, which now says that even though you have done the sandhi, and there is this adhi, long e, consider it as short e. So this is actually the substitute, but now consider it as not happened, non-existent. So consider this short e over here. And if we consider that this is short e, and so we have the vowel e over here, so we can now add the augment tuk and we get adhit and ya and finally adhitya. So consider that this sandhi has not happened. So we have adhi plus e over here and the verbal root is e. So we can add the augment tuk and we can derive the form adhitya. Similarly, if we go to kosichat, ko plus asichat, now there is this sandhi, purva rupa sandhi, stated by the sutra engap padanta dati will take place and we will have k o sichat. So now this o will be considered as part of the Purvapada and this uh, will be considered as the initial element of this word and then the Shatva which is the substitute Sh retroflex that is negated by the Sutra Satpada Dyoho. So this Shatva will be negated. So this O as a Ekadesha has already happened consider it as not happened. And if this is not happened, then this sa also comes immediately after a and the basic condition of shatva 
is not fulfilled. And so there is no Shattva. So we have Kosicha deriving the correct form. Now in the step Adhi plus year 6186 comes into play and says that even though the long substitute has already taken place, consider it as non-existent and there is short vowel in place. So the augment is then added and we get the form Adhitya. In Kosichat, one substitute is non-existence and hence sounds st s still comes immediately after short a uh, and hence the conditions for 8359 are not fulfilled and hence s does not get substituted by sh and we get the desired form Kosichat. Now let us look at Sandhi splitting. So we have so far studied the sutras with the help of which Sandhi is generated. We also in this lecture studied some examples where Sandhi got generated. Now let us talk about Sandhi splitting. Simply reversal of rules will help Sandhi splitting. This is quite simple, but there are problems. The major problem is over generation. So we will take an example of Sabarna Dirgha Sandhi. Now when you have to split a Sandhi given a text, you will have to then tap each and every long vowel for example, because there is possibility that every long vowel consists of the constituents a plus a etc four possibilities. Now that will lead to quite a lot of over generation. And in order to avoid over generation, the Sandhi splitting task may require a strong lexica. So lexica of basic building blocks as well as intermediate forms, that is sub word level information that needs to be provided as well as the finally derived forms. This is needed in order to do the Sandhi splitting effectively without causing too much over generation. So for example, if we have Karmanye Vadhikaras and there is only one long A over here. So this long vowel can be split into the following com components Karmanyeva and Adhikaras karmanye va and adhikaras, karmanye va and adhikaras or karmanye va and adhikaras. Amongst these four now, the lexica will come to our help and will be able to tell us that there is one more year there that can be split into e plus a or e plus a and then karmani eva that is part of the lexicon and not eva. And so the options eva are eliminated. Similarly, the word in the lexicon is adhikaras and not adhikaras. And so adhikara, that option is also eliminated. In this way, the most probable option seems to be the first one and it needs to be supported also by lexicon. This is how the Sandhi splitting can happen effectively. To summarize, in detail, we have studied several aspects of Achsandhi, its classification, its instances, their template examples, the specific examples, the rules, the traditional meta rules to interpret the sutras stating which these Achsandhis. So we have to close the Achsandhis now, after this exhaustive study. And then now we proceed to study the consonant sandhi or the hal sandhi which is the second most important type of sandhi in Sanskrit grammar. 
we shall do this this in the next lecture thank you for your patience